el general de la muerte, the general of death. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, a new documentary about Guatemala links the country's turbulent past with those like General Otto Pérez Molina, who are active players in its present. Granito, How to Nail a Dictator, part political thriller, part memoir, spans four decades. It follows several people, including the film's director, Pamela Yates, as they search for the details that can be used to hold accountable those responsible for genocide. This is a portion of the film's trailer. Ever since I filmed these generals in 1982, I've wanted to see them pay for their crimes. It is so hard to nail senior military officers who ordered this. When you want to indict a dictator, you need evidence. Witnessing is the essence of being a documentary filmmaker. Capturing moments in time, never knowing how history will judge them. People have it in their minds that anyone can be killed in Guatemala for nothing. When I think about the defendants, I get really angry. You know, I get really pissed. Came addressed to me, so it says, Freddy, tenemos a la vista. We're watching your kids' schools and where you work. En parte lo regaremos por la ciudad. We'll scatter your parts throughout the city. Nunca vamos a callar. We will never remain silent. Quiere callar. Rios Mon wants to silence us, but he can't. My name has a meaning. Antonio quiere. Antonio is the one. Es el que. Who confronts the enemy? If we Maya people don't unite, we won't survive. So when we come along and do this kind of work, they're afraid. They're afraid, and they should be afraid, because we're coming after them. That's an excerpt from the film Granito, How to Nail a Dictator, opened here in New York at the IFC last night. For more, we're joined by the director, Pamela Yates. She narrates the film's central story about the search for evidence of Guatemala's genocide, much of it drawn from footage she filmed in 1982 for her award-winning documentary, When the Mountains Tremble. At least 200,000 Guatemalans died during the genocide. We're also joined by Freddy Pecciarelli, director of the Guatemalan Forensic Anthropology Foundation and the film. He leads teams to unearth mass graves in a search for those killed by the military, all the while facing threats himself from clandestine groups that want the truth to stay buried. Uh, he's who you just heard uh, in that trailer. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Thank Pam, you. this latest film, uh, talk about its significance in light of the presidential elections that are taking place right now. Well, Granito is really about the importance of human rights documentation, not just as a filmmaker and um, going into all of my filmic outtakes from 1982 to find additional evidence for the case in Spain and the cases in Guatemala, but also the other human rights defenders, um, Freddy Pecciarelli, who's been fi finding and looking for scientific forensic evidence, uh, Kate Doyle, who is going through secret military and police documents to find evidence including evidence um, for against Otto Perez Molina, who is part of uh, um, Plan Sofia, one of the documents that was leaked to her and which you see in Granito. So the big idea of the film is when how important it is to continue to document and how important this documentation is for evidence in the cases. Uh, Pamela, in the film, you talk about how difficult it has been to prove that former president and general uh, Efrain Rios Montt knew what the Guatemalan military was doing when the government denied any knowledge of the genocide and said there were no army records. I want to play a clip from Granito when forensic scientist Kate Doyle explains how she was approached by someone in Guatemala with a package that contained information that would prove especially useful in documenting the counterinsurgency sweep. Plan Sofia is a collection of documents that 
were created in July and August of 1982, documenting a counterinsurgency sweep that took place in central Kiche. It describes the mission of the operation as the extermination of subversive elements in the area. It's very much a product of, of the Rios Monte Army. Now th this patrol report is created in order to show the commander that they did what they were told. This is exactly the kind of communication that we need to prove that there was a two-way flow of information and that the high command was not ignorant of what the patrols on the ground were doing. From the perspective of a prosecutor or an investigator, it is so hard to nail the intellectual authors of these crimes. It is so hard to nail the senior military officers who ordered this. Um, so Plan, Plan Sophia is, is, is a very significant, explosive document. That was Kate Doyle, senior analyst with the National Security Archive, in the film Granito. Pam Yates, why do the film now, following up what, how many decades after you did your first film? I think it was really because the um, international attorneys in the genocide case being heard in the Spanish National Court asked me to go into all of my filmic outtakes. And explain and that more, the Spain case. The Spain case is a case under the principle of universal jurisdiction, where some crimes are so horrible, like genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, that if they're not being prosecuted in the country of origin, that any country in the world that signed the Genocide Convention should be able to take on and prosecute those criminals. But one of the effects that the Spanish National Court case has had is that it has emboldened judges and prosecutors in Guatemala to pursue their own cases for genocide. And in fact, the first army officer in the history of Latin America has just been arrested in June for genocide. So we're beginning to see a tipping point for justice, one of the things that, that Jennifer said would stop if Otto Perez Molina were elected. But I believe, and I think um, the, the sense of granito, which is that we all have a tiny grain of sand to contribute to this judicial process or positive social change, means that we really have to support this tipping point for justice in Guatemala both inside the country and from outside the country. And we hope that Granito, the film, will contribute to this. Uh, Freddie uh, Pacharelli, you've been involved in this now for quite some time in terms of digging up the scientific evidence of, of how the genocide occurred and who were the victims. Could you talk about how you got involved? And, uh, of course, these days, uh, the wars are forgotten in Central America, and now everyone assumes that it's a new day. But uh, the threats that you've been facing, if you could talk about that as well. Well, I got involved, and I used to live in New York, and I, uh, my family fled here in 1980 because of death threats to my father, and eventually, when I was in Brooklyn College, I sort of wanted to reconnect with Guatemala and found Dr. Clyde Snow, who invited me to go to Guatemala and uh, take a course with the team, and eventually I stayed there for 16 and a half years. Uh, during that time, we've uh, exhumed over 14 hundred uh, different uh, communities where uh, these massacres or extrajudicial executions occurred. And as a result, we have uh, been getting death threats uh, for the last 10 years. Uh, the most recent ones come immediately after the sentencing of the four uh, military personnel ex caibiles in the Dos Arres uh, massacre. Uh, about four days later, we got a, a death threat written in, uh, handwritten in red ink, I telling us... Uh, I want to go to a clip that has you reading uh, one of these death threats. Um, you talk about this threatening letter that was sent to your workplace. This is from Granito. It's Freddy. It came addressed to me, so it says, Freddy. Freddy, now we have what we wanted, all the information in our hands. Today you will all pay sons of We have pictures and information of your family. We know your kids' schools and where you work. Your days are numbered. The Forensic Anthropologist Foundation won't ever be able to save you. Two or three armored cars won't save you. Your family will pay for everything. Damned revolutionary sons of your bodies will land in graves. We'll scatter your pieces throughout the city. Your family, sons, nephews, sisters, and parents will pay for everything, sons of The Forensic Anthropologist will pay. 
and it finishes by saying death. That's Freddy Petrelli in Granito, the forensic anthropologist who will not stop. Uh, Freddy, who is threatening you? Well, in reality, we don't know, but the truth is that we believe is the the military personnel uh, that are afraid of the evidence that we're presenting is that and that is being used against them in in court trials. Uh, in this last death threat, we know is people that are linked to the to the military personnel that were found guilty and were sentenced to six thousand sixty years in jail each, thirty years for each one of the deaths, and thirty years for crimes uh, of lesser humanity. Um, so it's the people who committed the crimes that are threatening us, and they have let us know this. Well, I want to ask you, because we had in headlines the report about uh, developments in Colombia, where the former head of Colombia's uh, secret police, the DAS, was sentenced to 25 years for his involvement in uh, working with the death squads uh, to supervise the killings, uh, especially of a sociologist who was involved in investigating the death squads there. Uh, I want to ask you, as you've spent now 16 years, you say, uh, doing this work in Guatemala, why, even in a country like Colombia, are some people being brought to justice uh, for what's happening, but yet in Guatemala, where the genocide was so much more extensive, it's been so difficult uh, to hold those who were the intellectual uh, authors and the people supervising the killing responsible? Well, in Guatemala, what has happened is pretty much blanket impunity after the signing of the peace accords, and people are afraid. And the prosecutor's office has not been moving forward with these cases till now that we have uh, Claudia Paz y Paz, the new attorney general. And uh, although there's evidence of the crimes, not only physical evidence, but testimonial evidence, the prosecutors have been very afraid and have not gotten support. Uh, most of the people who participated at a high level are also in, in still in positions of power. Uh, General Efrain Rios Montt still today is in Congress. Um, so that has contributed to, to a lack of justice. Um, Pam, the footage you have of Freddie and his team digging up these bodies. Freddie, if you expl can explain what exactly you're doing, where are you finding these mass graves, and how are you identifying them? Well, most of the mass graves that we've dug up during the last 19 years are in the communities in the highlands, and these are the victims of massacres. But recently, we've also found that a lot of the bodies of the people that were forcibly disappeared, after they were tortured, interrogated, tortured, they were executed and thrown in the streets of cities, Guatemala City being one of these cities. And then the bodies would be autopsied in some cases and taken uh, to cemeteries like La Verbena Cemetery. What we're doing now is we're looking for the bodies of the people that were disappeared and buried as John or Jane Doe's or unidentified bodies. In La Verbena, what happened is after they were buried in individual graves, after some time because of lack of space, they take the bodies out and they throw them in these huge bone wells. There's four of them. So, so far, we've exhumed over 12,500 bodies, and we believe at least 1,000 of those bodies are bodies of victims of forced disappearance. And the connections to September 11th, every which way? The election that led to the—well, um, uh, this runoff election was September 11th uh, that elected Perez Molina, though he has to go through another election. And the scientific, the, the tools you're using come from 9-11. That is correct. We are using Emphasis. Was, it, it's a software developed by the company Gene Codes. It was developed for the identification of the victims of 9-11. This software was donated to the foundation so we can compare the genetic profiles from, from the victims, the skeletons, to the genetic profiles of the families. So, um, you know, the fact that I grew up in New York, and I saw the effort put in to identify the victims of 9-11, I thought was important in my decision of looking for the victims of forced disappearance in Guatemala. And uh, we've taken the technology and also the spirit of New York into Guatemala to look for the lost Guatemalans or the disappeared Guatemalans. And this issue that uh, some of the press reports here in The New York Times and other publications are talking about how support for uh, for uh, Perez Molina is coming largely from young people who have no knowledge of the situation uh, that happened uh, and the genocide of uh, 30 years ago. and. Uh, uh, but the violence that's occurring now uh, in the streets of Guatemala City and Salvador and these other places, the the, the impact uh, of this and uh, the the connection to the to the to the wars and the and the genocide of the 80s. 
Well, the connection is clear because of the lack of justice in the crimes of, uh, of the war in Guatemala. It has let people know that they can pretty much do anything and get away with anything in Guatemala. And that has propagated, you know, uh, the drug cartels to become stronger, as well as the, the gangs in the Maras to also become stronger and become tools in a political game uh, to make it seem like there is no hope other than to elect a, a former general. And the general. connection of the politicians with the drug cartels, because apparently not, uh, not just uh, Perez Molina has been implicated, but several other candidates who were running for president as well. Yes. Uh, there's According to the press, there's connections to the drug cartels everywhere in Guatemala. And are you afraid, uh, if Perez Molina is elected, of it making your identification of these bodies and digging more difficult, more death threats coming? Of course. Of course we're afraid. Um, because of his direct ties to the conflict, it would only seem logical that he is not interested in us doing this work. Nonetheless, I do have to say that we have uh, been able to work even when uh, the FRG, which is Efrain Rios uh, party, was uh, in power. So um, I think the work is too powerful to, to be uh, shut down, but individually, yes, we're afraid. Well, I want to thank you both for being with us. The film Granito, How to Nail a Dictator, is playing at the IFC here in New York. It just premiered last night. These days that it is here in New York determine whether it will be seen in, in uh, cinemas around the country. It is a remarkable film. It is called Granito, which means grain of sand, how to nail a dictator. Freddie Petrelli, thanks so much for being with us, and Pam Yates for doing this film and all the work that you have done. This is